intrauterine life is not the paradise, as some people try to make us believe. This substance, which is uh, the potential of a human being, feels every little feeling that the mother feels. We are the receiver of all the happiness and of all the difficulties of our parents. This is something that we're just beginning to explore gene by gene. We're really pushing back that time frame to say that there are factors environmentally that happen prenatally. Human beings are affected by the environment as soon as they have an environment. And that means as soon as we implant it in the womb. In our society, there's so much rushing. You're so busy, everything going, going, going. Fetuses of mothers who were high anxious, they're showing differences almost, we want to say, in temperament. We see reduced brain volume, reduced gray matter density. People are conceiving, carrying, and birthing children under increasingly stressed conditions. Stress that affected one generation will be played out very exactly in the next generation. People have been through wars, famine, disasters of all sorts. When we see dysfunction in people, we're actually seeing the imprint of that early experience. An adult trauma is really a fetal trauma. And this has been the missing piece, the foundation for our whole life. When you come to a point of knowing what is the cause of all this, when you have an answer, like the door opens, depressed mothers, or even worse, um, schizophrenic mothers, they are not in synchrony. The baby is getting the message that there's something wrong with it. Its prefrontal cortex is not going to be tuned properly. So that baby is going to develop a kind of depressive personality. The monkeys tell us more about the severe effects of infant deprivation. The ones that were reared in isolation just don't behave normally when they're finally given a playmate. They rarely touch, and when they do, the contact's surprisingly vicious. Children who are emotionally inhibited will become dysfunctional adults. They will have difficulty learning and will be more hostile. And that starts right in the womb. When the brain begins to be organized, um, genetically speaking, each neuron is destined for a certain place where it will eventually end up. Neurons, brain cells, are the information processing units of the brain. And they make connections and they organize themselves into functional networks. Every second of prenatal life, 50,000 new neurons are being produced. Every second. There's not a machine in the world that can duplicate that. When you have all those neurons being produced, they are very vulnerable. And smallest, smallest influence will make a huge sort of imprint on, on those neurons, on the neural circuits. If there is chronic stress, the woman is constantly obsessing about something or worrying about something, more and more stress hormones like cortisone is being pushed into the bloodstream. When you have too much cortisone in the brain itself, then the nerve cells will be interfered with in their passage and they may even be destroyed. We were the first, or amongst the first, to glimpse inside at the brain becoming wired up. With this new safe MRI technology, we're observing large-scale systems. What we see in infants exposed to stress in utero is reduced brain volume, reduced gray matter density. So if you are less dense in those regions, that suggests that there are less processors available. We also see reductions in 
hippocampal volume and increase in amygdala volume. The hippocampus is critically important for learning and memory. The amygdala is very important for emotional processing, responding to emotional information. Now why we think those are particularly important during fetal development is first of all, they begin to be developed very early. Disruption in those areas is also associated with higher risk for emotional psychopathology or uh, neuropsychiatric illness. If the mother is upset, if she has a very high level of neurohormones, if she has very high level of stress hormones, all of those things will be passed to the baby. There are all kinds of feelings coming from the mother. All kinds of anxieties, depression, fears about everything. Let's be clear, mothers love their children. So do fathers. But there are these subtle, unconscious things, see, that this mother is dealing with in her life. Say she may be in a tough marriage, but she gets pregnant. Well, part of her may want the baby, and part of her may really say, gee, this is not a good time for a baby. In fact, this is gonna be very hard. And a, a baby may get a lot of that. That little bit of stuff is feeling all that without any way of communicating. It just absorbs, it's just hold it. And that's what it gets for nine months. What comes to mind is the um, confusion, if you can speak of that, in, in, a, in, a, in a fetus, um, a developing human being. whose mother is conflicted, who wants a child perhaps, but is afraid of having a child, who wants to love, but is themselves very afraid and very stressed. So the kid is getting a very confusing message about the world, that this world wants me, this world doesn't want me.